Hello everyone, this is Salar and you're watching Smart Code. So friends, today we are going to learn how to code a product card that you see on the screen with the help of HTML and CSS. I'm actually recording this tutorial to help my programming students and the knowledge they will get from here will be used in solving an assignment, right? The product card is very simple. It consists of uh, an image, a title, uh, some text, and a button so we will develop this uh, application step by step and we will put focus uh, to the background rendering process right so let's jump into the code and start developing this application now to develop this application we need uh, a html file a css file and uh, an image uh, like the t-shirt image i'm using in this tutorial so I have everything in place. As you can see, I have an index of HTML file, a CSS file, and an image of the t-shirt. Let's now start with the HTML. In the body element, I will first uh, take a container uh, with a class cards. So this container can have more than one product cards, although we are coding only the one, right? Now, a product card is basically an article. So I will use now the article element to define a product card and give it a class like card one so if you have another product so you can use another article element with class card two uh, card three card four and so on now take a look at the product card on the screen and try to figure out the html elements we need to document or to code the content of it for the image, we need an image element. For title, we need a heading element. For text description, we need paragraph element. And for the button, we need a button element. So as now we have figured out the elements we need to structure this code. So let's now uh, code it inside the article element. For image, uh, we need image element. But I won't uh, put my image element directly inside the article. Uh, I would rather prefer to put uh, image inside its own container and I will tell you later on why do we need images in their own container. So let's first take an image container. I'm taking a div here with a class image uh, container and inside it I will put my image and the name of the image is hoodie.png. And so now after the image, uh, our card has a title and for that, we can take a second level heading and the title is hoodie file and then some description. Uh, for that, we can take a paragraph element. Let's now put some text in it. Uh, and finally, we need a button give it a class by and the text should be the by right we can put classes to the h2 and paragraph element title right so now the structure of our product card is almost ready. And at this stage, uh, this would be the result in the browser. And it's quite acceptable because uh, there is no CSS in it. So after the HTML, it's not time for the CSS. CSS file uh, we have here, and the file is already linked to the HTML document. So just open the CSS file and start writing the CSS. In the CSS, we usually start with a universal selector where we perform uh, some reset work. For example, uh, we will reset margin to zero and padding to zero and we set box sizing to the power box. So margin and padding zero is gonna reset the browser defaults. And the box sizing is set to the power box. I have already done a very detailed tutorial on box sizing property. And if you don't know what box sizing is, I would recommend to watch the tutorial on it. Now, as I refresh my page, you will notice the margins that we have here 
and the padding which is actually coming from the body is totally uh, removed. So let's refresh the page and so you see uh, the margin is gone and the default padding uh, is also gone. Right? So it's like to start with a clean shade. So we have removed the defaults and now we can put our own margin and padding. Now after that I will target the body element. To the body I will give width of 80% right so the body is always 80% of the screen size and uh, I will put the body to the center of the page and here I am using a very traditional technique margin zero auto you can use flex or grid to center align the body and at the same time I want to give a background color to the body so that we can and study the rendering process. Let's say the background color is coral. Now refresh the page and see what happens. And there you see the size of the body has become 80% and it is also center aligned. But the problem is we don't see these changes very clearly because the color we apply to the body is also applied to the HTML document. And this is a default behavior body is a root element so the color applied to the body i mean the background color applied to the body becomes the background color of the entire document but we can fix it we can explicitly apply a different color to the html document now let's now target the html element uh, and give it a background color of white right and now refresh the page so here you see right so it's uh, uh, quite uh, visible. This is the HTML uh, document in the background and here we have the body element which is the 80% uh, of the HTML uh, document and here you see the body is uh, in the center of the document, right? So let's now go ahead and so now I will uh, target this cars container because I want to show you something So now target the container using its class and just give it a background color, let's say light blue, right? So let's now refresh the page and check the result. And here we go. So what I want to point out here is the main is a container, a block container inside the body. So the main container has taken up the entire width of the body. Now you don't see the coral color, uh, which is uh, right now, uh, in the background, right? So remember this behavior of the block element. A block element takes up the entire available width of its parent element until unless you specify uh, another width to the block. Uh, and the same principle is applied to the optical element because uh, this one is also a block element. So let's now target this uh, article element in the CSS uh, using its class and give it a background color. Uh, you can take this one, save the file and refresh in the browser. So as I refresh the page, you will see now we have a different color. So the main element has taken up the entire width of the body and the article which is actually inside the main element has taken up the entire bit of the main. And so now from the card one uh, or the article, we will start working with the width property. I want my card's width to be the 30% uh, of its parent uh, container. So I will code like this, width 30%. Uh, now if I refresh the page, you will see the difference here you see in the background the width of the uh, article uh, has uh, become now the 30 percent of the parent container another thing that i want you to notice here is the size of the image image is inside its own container and that container is inside the article and now the article has a width uh, set to 30 percent but it does not affect the size of the images. Images keep their own sizes until unless we change them. 
Now, to adjust the size or to resize the image, we have two options. Option number one, uh, we can uh, resize our image uh, before we put them on the web. And this option is recommended. We don't use CSS to uh, do massive resizing in the browser. If we do so, uh, our page will load slowly. And the option number two is we can definitely use CSS to resize our images. So which option I'm going to use? I will use the option number two because we are doing experiments. But remember, when you work for any client, you will definitely optimize and resize your images in advance before you put them on the web, right? Now, let's take a look uh, again on the HTML. So here is our image and our image has its own image container. And this container is inside the article container. An article container has already been given a width of 30%. So I want my image to sit properly inside the image container as well as the article container. So let's first take a look how does the image container uh, looks uh, in the browser uh, after the uh, rendering process. Uh, in the CSS, I'm going to target the image container. And we'll put a background uh, color to it, right? Let's now refresh the page and see the output. And here you see. Now you can clearly see the image container in the background. And now you remember the default behavior of a block element. The image container is actually a div, and div is a block element, and it has taken up the entire available width of its parent container, which is 30%, right? And the height of a block container is always set to auto by default. And that's why you see the height, which is almost equal to the height of the image object, right? So now I want my image to sit inside this uh, image container, which is uh, right now uh, yellow in color. So what we usually do, uh, we first uh, target uh, our image element, and here we code a width property and we would say uh, the width should be the 100% and height uh, should be the auto. So this is a very genuine technique to let the images uh, fit themselves inside the container. So our container has a width 30% and by writing width 100% we are actually forcing this image to fit uh, itself uh, inside the parent container. And on the other hand, height auto is also very important. By writing so, we are actually giving command to keep the best aspect ratio, right? Now the image adjusts itself inside its parent container as well as uh, it keeps uh, the best aspect ratio. Let's now refresh the page. And here you see, the image is now fitted inside the container and the aspect ratio is also good. So the difficult part is done. Let's now style this product card further. To the article, uh, we can put uh, border. And uh, we can put uh, some padding as well. Right? Let's refresh it. And here you see, so we have border and we have put some padding. Now we can see uh, the uh, article element uh, peeping out uh, from here, right? Let's now target and style the title and the description text. So our uh, title uh, has a class title and description text has a class description. Uh, we can give them a combined padding. So we can target both of them, title, description, and we can put a padding of 5 pixel. Let's now refresh and you see now we have more space within the elements. And finally, we are going to select and style this button. And we will try to put it to the center of its parent element right here. So start with uh, selecting the button in the CSS and our button has our class by. You can use this class to 
select the button and uh, say uh, border none because the button element has a default border we don't want that border and uh, we want background color black and uh, text color should be white width 100 pixels height 40 pixels and cursor should be the pointer right now refresh and check the output and here we have a button right now one final thing is to put this button to the center of this container and it can easily be done uh, using the css flex so let me show you how so our button is actually uh, inside the article and uh, it is the direct children of the article element so in order to make this button a flex item we first need to apply flex uh, to the container so now in the css uh, here we have uh, our article container so we are going to make it a flex container display flex and the flex uh, direction should be the color so it won't make any change uh, to our layout let's say if i refresh the page and here you see our layout is totally intact but now this button has become a flex item and using the align self property we can uh, put this button easily to the center so down there here we have a button and we will simply uh, call the align self property and the value uh, we are going to take from here is the center that's it let's now refresh the page and here you see our button is center line so we have almost coded uh, the product part and now we don't need the background colors so we can simply uh, remove them from the css so here we have uh, we don't need this one we don't need this one We can keep this yellow color and now refresh and here we have our product card right and you can definitely put some more styles according to your requirement now if you have understood the entire process of developing a product card like this i want you to go a step further i actually want you to develop a layout like this so here we have three articles side by side in a row and the length of the description text is actually different but still uh, the buy button uh, sits uh, to the bottom uh, of the article and it is central line as you can see here and these articles are very much uh, responsive to the different uh, screen sizes as you can see they keep their shapes So friends, that was a simple tutorial and as I mentioned earlier, I am recording this one to help my programming students. My students are going to develop a layout where they have uh, several items uh, in a row, uh, just like you see on the screen. And it can easily be accomplished using the CSS Flexbox. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Uh, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I will see you in some other tutorial. Thanks for watching.